all of you. So, we are here to know about microorganisms. Already we have learnt in our previous classes that microorganisms they are our friends as well as enemy. Why do we call them friends? Because they are very much useful to all of us. There are so many uses of microorganisms and microorganisms they are also called as farmer's friend. Even we too call that microbes are our friends too. They are friends. How they are friends to us that we will see. Then next microbes they are four. They are dangerous. They are harmful to us. So, how they are our friends and what makes them our foe or enemy that we will learn from today's class. Now, can you see bacteria, amoeba, paramecium and bread mold with your naked eye? Are you able to see them with your naked eye, open eye without any aid, without the help of microscope? Are we able? No. Yes, we are not able to see them. So, name the bacteria present in curd. Can you tell me which bacteria is present in curd? Which bacteria is present in curd? Who will tell me? It starts with L. Yes, very good. It is lactobacillus. Lactobacillus is the name of the bacteria that present in curd. Are you able to see them with your naked eye? Are you able to see them? No, we are not able to see them. So, what do we call these organisms? What do we call them? You can check your answer all of you. Right. I won't be saying the name because it is difficult. Some of your name I miss and you feel bad for that. So, that is the reason. Now, what do we call these organisms? Very good. It is microorganisms. What is it? Microorganisms. So, what are microorganisms? The organisms which cannot be seen, which cannot be seen with our naked, naked or unaided eye. That means, we are not using any kind of instrument. Unaided eyes are called microorganisms. Examples for microorganisms are bacteria, protozoa, fungi, algae and then virus. All these are the examples for microorganisms, right? It is fungus. Now, microorganisms, they can be seen with the help of what? A microscope. We know that there are different kinds of microscope. Do you remember? We have a simple microscope, simple microscope, then we have a compound microscope, compound microscope and electron microscope, electron microscope. Yes, very good. So, we have these different types of microscopes, all these microscope. In simple microscope, see we use sometimes lens also, lens will magnify a bit. So, each microscope here, it has a higher magnifying version. In simple microscope, suppose a small organisms, we can see this much only. In compound microscope, the size will be this bigger. In electron, the size will be still bigger. So, like that. So, when we come to electron microscope, we are able to see the detailed of the organelles present in them. Detailed of the organelles present in them compared to compound microscope scope and then simple microscope as the name itself is simple. So, it is very simple.
in simple microscope we are able to see the resolution in very lesser amount very small small picture of that microscope will be seen now when we talk about the groups of microscope there are four major groups of microorganisms what are they the four major groups of microorganisms they are bacteria fungi protozoa and then algae bacteria fungi protozoa algae now you will say that viruses they are also microorganisms why these viruses being a microorganisms they are different from all these microbes they are different from bacteria fungi protozoa algae and why they are not among one among the major groups of microorganisms right why they are not among the major group of microorganisms because viruses being it is also a microbe we know but it is different from other microbes why because virus they reproduce only inside the host body virus it require it requires what it requires some body body of organisms they may require plant animals or human beings so virus they require what body or cells of an organisms without body or cells of an organisms virus they cannot survive they live outside for so many days so viruses they can live outside for so many days but they will be inactive we know that when you will come to higher classes you will be learning about this viruses they have a tough outer layer so this outer layer it will protect the virus present inside and when they are out out where outside the body whenever they are outside the body then they will be inactive they will be inactive that means they will not perform any kind of function they will not perform the functions of life processes digestion nutrition all these functions it won't be performed by microorganisms now viruses now when viruses when viruses they will enter the human body or the plants or some of the body of the animals or cells then what happens this outer covering it breaks it breaks and then what happens they'll come out they'll see the favorable conditions they'll just see the favorable conditions when they find the favorable condition at that time they will start dividing dividing and multiplying now they'll start performing all the body functions so this this is how viruses they are different from all other major groups of microbes now when we talk about microbes we know that some of the microbes are very good they are helpful but on the other hand some of the microbes are dangerous that means they are harmful to us so when we talk about harmful microbes we call them as disease causing microbes so when we talk about disease causing microbes diseases are caused by what diseases they are caused by pathogens what are pathogens they are disease causing microbes now pathogens are present where everywhere we know that microbes they are present everywhere where in air that we breathe in water that we drink and in the food that we eat so microbes are everywhere when microbes are everywhere then disease causing microbes that means pathogens are everywhere now how do they enter our body 
these pathogens, these microbes, they enter our body through air, through the air which we breathe. We cannot filter air. That is why see nowadays we are using what mask because of COVID. So, we do not want if any microbes are present in the air that should get inside our body and then when we talk about water they get inside our body through water and food that we drink and eat. Now, they can also be transmitted not only from air, water and food but they can be transmitted from an infected person to a healthy person. If a person is suffering from disease, see uh, common cold is very common disease. In our house, when one of the family member is suffering from common cold, then what happens? The next day, others will get. When you were in schools at the time, when you were sitting in a bench, that time if your friend is suffering, you may not suffer but some other they used to get get infected very fast what is the reason for that some of us we have a very good immune system so our, our immune system is able to fight with the foreign microbes that will enter our body but in some persons the immunity is very low so due to low immunity they will get affected very fast compared to others. So, microbes enter our body through air, water and food. They can also be transmitted from an infected person to a healthy person. Now, the disease that spread from an infected person to a healthy person through air, water, food or any kind of physical contact they are called communicable diseases or infectious diseases. Examples for communicable diseases are what? Cholera, common cold, common cold, chicken pox and then tuberculosis. We also call it as a TB, right? Now, when we talk about communicable diseases, on the other hand, a word comes a term comes non-communicable diseases or non-infectious diseases. What do we mean by non-communicable diseases? The diseases that will not spread from an infected person to a healthy person through any means. Those are called non-communicable or non-infectious diseases. Now, when we talk about blood pressure. If a person is having blood pressure, we will go share everything, the uh, uh, pressure that person is having. If we will share water, food with it also, then it is also not going to spread from one person to another. So, that is the example for non-communicable diseases, diabetes. It is also a non-communicable diseases. Now, let us see some of the common human diseases caused by microbes very important it is given in short in your textbook but the name of some of the microbes i have collected that we will try to understand now first disease is cholera it is caused by a microbe named vibrio cholerae name of the microbe is Vibrio cholerae and Vibrio cholerae is a bacteria. Bacteria is having different shapes. It has a, uh, coccus, Vibrio and then spirally different shapes of bacteria are there. Now, Vibrio cholerae is a bacteria that causes cholera. How this cholera gets transmitted? Transmitted from one person to another. It gets transmitted through contaminated water and food. So, cholera gets transmitted through contaminated water and food. How can we avoid it? We should avoid eating and drinking contaminated food and water and get vaccinated. By doing this, we can prevent ourselves from getting infected by the disease called 
cholera. Second one, it is influenza. Now, influenza is a disease. It is caused by influenza virus. It gets transmitted through what? Air and contaminated handkerchief. See, when a person is suffering from cold and cough, we say that do not use their handkerchief because their handkerchief may have so many germs, pathogens present in it. When we touch their handkerchief, that pathogen may come to our fingers and when we touch our nose or mouth with this finger, then it gets inside our body. Hence, avoid being close to infected person. Do not touch nose and eyes frequently because your hands will be contaminated. Always whenever you come from outside to your house and all, you have to clean your hands thoroughly with water, wash your face, legs and all, everything you have to clean it. So, then only you will be infection, infection free. It is said no, now because of COVID, when we come from outside every time, within one to two hours and all we have to go on sanitizing ourselves we have to use sanitizers because if the pathogens or the microbes they'll come to our hand that should be killed and we should not touch our our eyes nose mouth with contaminated hands now next disease is malaria malaria is caused by a protozoa, it is caused by a protozoa named Plasmodium vivax. Its mode of transmission is through the bite of a mosquito. In that also see, not male mosquito, bite of female mosquito. And the name of that female mosquito is Enophiles mosquito. What are the preventive measures? We know that we can get vaccinated controlling mosquito population. You will find that during rainy seasons, the small dicks and all everywhere water will get collected. So, we have to avoid that stagnation of water. If water gets collected in that we can add little bit of kerosene oil that will help in killing the larva of the mosquitoes. Usage of mosquito mosquito populations and uses of mosquito curtains. Now, uses of mosquito nets. Mosquito nets, we can use it and then mosquito curtains, then we can use uh, some of the some of the mosquito repellents in the form of in the form of tube it comes in olden days. We used to get in the form of coils and all. Now, people are not using coils. So, we use different kinds of mosquito repellents. So, that mosquito will be killed or they will not enter our houses. Another disease is tuberculosis. Very common disease. You might have heard about it. It is caused by a bacteria called mycobacterium. Which bacteria? Mycobacterium and the mode of transmission of this disease is air. It also transmits through air. Preventive measures are what? Keep the patient in complete isolation. We have to keep the patient in isolation. Patient's personal belongings should be kept away from others so that others will not touch the patient's personal things and should not get contaminated by the pathogens. Vaccination should given at certain age. Another very common which all of you suf suffer, we suffer in our lifetime, we call it as chicken pox. It is caused by a virus called varicella zoster virus. Chicken pox is caused by varicella zoster virus and the mode of transmission is air and then contact with other persons or belongings. Then preventive measures are what? The preventive measures are same like tuberculosis. 
that is keep the patient in complete isolation. You might have seen that neem leaves are used and then on the top of the neem leaves patients are made to sleep. Neem paste is applied in the body of the patient when they are suffering from chicken pox. So, the patient should be kept in isolation. So, that patient also should not get contaminated and others also will not get contaminated at a same time. Next disease is polio. When we talk about polio, you might have heard about polio drops in uh, television and all. Amitabh Bachchan is doing ad no. Do bund zindagi ke. That is polio, polio drops caused by polio virus. The mode of transmission is air and water again and preventive measures are, measures are by vaccination. Will not get another kind of injection or something. Polio vaccination is oral polio vaccine. Children should receive 4 doses of inactivated polio vaccine. IPV we call it inactivated polio vaccine starting at 2 months of age till 5 years. Then we have the next disease called typhoid. Typhoid is caused by Salmonella typhi and it gets transmitted through water. What are the preventive measures? Taking a typhoid fever vaccination, avoid food that is raw or uncooked. That means it should be washed thoroughly without eating it. Drinking boiled water, washing hands before eating and fruits and vegetables also should be washed thoroughly so that any germs present in it should be removed. Now we have another disease, hepatitis A. It is caused by hepatitis A virus and it is transmitted through water. Preventive measures, drinking boiled water and getting vaccinated. Another disease is anthrax. We know that this disease is very much common to animals but from animals human beings are also getting these disease. Human beings are also suffering from it. So, it is caused by bacillus anthracis a bacteria and then human gets infected by this disease through direct or indirect contact with the sick animals some of them they rear these animals that is milk giving animals are reared cow buffalo and all so when that animal get infected if the person is going closer by or in contact with that animals and all then the person also may get the disease called anthrax now preventive measures are what a three dose series of anthrax vaccine is given. A 60 day treatment with antibiotics it is given to them. Now already when we talk about antibiotics we have learnt about it. Who will tell me what are anti antibiotics? What are antibiotics? Who will tell me? The, the substance that kill or stop the growth of disease causing microbes. Such medicines we call it as antibiotics. Now we have learnt about the diseases which are caused by microbes in human beings. Let us see some of the plant diseases caused by microbes. Few I have written, few more you have to find out. First one, it is citrus canker. Citrus canker, it is caused by Xanthomonas citri, a bacteria and mode of transmission is air. I will be sending you the pictures of all these microbes. Rust of wheat, rust of wheat is caused by that is Pusenia tricina. It is a fungi, mode of transmission is air and through seeds also it gets transmitted through the contaminated seeds. 
येलो वेन मोजैक ऑफ भिंडी और ओकरा लेडीज फिंगर वी कॉल इट भिंडी इन हिंदी इट इज कॉस्ड बाय मोनोपैटाइट बेगोमो वायरस मोड ऑफ ट्रांसमिशन इज थ्रू insects you can find out still more diseases which are caused by microbes in plants then some of the common diseases caused by microbes in animals will see foot and mouth disease very common it is caused by picorna virus picorna virus foot and mouth disease it is caused in rearing animals cows buffaloes goats and all it is transmitted through infected animals one animal get infected from this disease and that infection gets transferred from that animal to other animal then avian influenza it is caused by avian influenza virus al virus it is caused uh, the disease this disease is related to birds or poultry poultry birds poultry hens and all so infected it gets transmitted through what infected birds and their saliva then feces the feces feces and nasal secretions the affected bird or flocks are depopulated you might have heard few years ago when avian influenza bird flu has come then so many birds they were killed and then they were buried inside the soil so the population when they are affected the flocks they has to be depopulated then another disease you might have heard about it we call it as african swine fever we know that this disease it comes from pig it is caused by large dna virus of the aspharviridae family mode of transmission is what direct contact with infected pigs or feces or body fluids of the pigs and indirect contact such as equipment vehicles or people who work with pigs pig eating infected pig meats so these diseases are transmitted in all these means what are the preventive measures cleanliness and disinfection of farms transport ban on pigs and pork products then only will be able, able to control african swine fever now these all was about the harmful effect of microbes now microbes they not only have harmful effect but they are very very useful for us without microbes we can't imagine our life also right what are those can you tell me some of the uses of microorganisms some of the uses already we have learnt this topic so let me know the uses which you know the uses of microbes who is going to answer what are the different uses of microbes about useful microorganisms i know it will take time for you to type manoj very good decomposition then cleaning environment nagraj yes increase of soil fertility shilpa good used for preparation alcohol yes ningraj then decomposition vaishnavi correct vijay lakshmi decomposition shiva kumar decomposition decomposition is right yes making curd manoj making curd is right and used in pickles shiva kumar yes making curd is already said decomposition is said then anything else yes yeast is a microbe ningraj it is used to prepare cake correct 
it is used for medicinal purpose nagraj correct okay fine now let us see one by one when we talk about useful microbes microorganisms play an important role in our lives most of them are beneficial in many ways yes ningraj it is used as antibiotics so microorganisms are used for various purposes such as see one by one they are used in preparation of curd bread and cake curd contains the bacterium lactobacillus which promotes the formation of curd so when we talk about curd so here we can say one quotation see life begets life what is the meaning of this one life will give rise to another life when we talk about all the living organisms then all the living organisms they need one life at the initial stage now when we talk about curd in curd what your mother is doing she'll be boiling the milk the milk is allowed to come to a normal temperature after that she'll take one spoon of curd and she'll mix that to the milk and then only next after 5 to 6 hours we'll find that the milk starts curdling and the formation of curd takes place which bacteria is there lactobacillus bacteria is present in curd now bacteria are used in making cheese pickles and other food items also some other uses of bacteria they are bacteria and yeast they are also helpful for fermentation what is fermentation the process of conversion of sugar into alcohol is known as fermentation so bacteria and yeast are also helpful for fermentation process that is fermentation of rice idlis dosa batter all these takes place because of bacteria and yeast microbes are used for commercial purpose such as production of alcohol wine acetic acid that is vinegar vinegar is acetic acid yeast is used for the production of alcohol and wine right so yeast is the friend of bakers we call it bakers friend is yeast because in almost all the bakeries yeast is used and yeast will grow in sugar medium it requires sugar medium that's why you will find all the bakery items they have little bit of sugar present in it because in sugary medium yeast starts dividing very fast and because of these yeast only the bakery products it will be spongy and smooth now microbes are used for medicinal use such as anti biotic tablets capsules or injections like penicillins now what do we mean by antibiotics the medicine which kill or stop the growth of disease causing bacteria or microbes they are called antibiotics now microorganisms are used to make vaccines for treating different diseases such as cholera tuberculosis smallpox and hepatitis what do we mean by vaccine covid vaccine and all people are talking a lot about vaccines so what do we mean by vaccines vaccines are what they are the product that stimulates a person's immune system to produce immunity to a specific disease protecting the person from that disease is called vaccine now in vaccine what is done we all know that when we talk about vaccine then what is present in it what does vaccine has in it it has half killed bacteria these half killed bacteria are treated with good microbes so when we talk about vaccines what do they have they have half killed half killed bacteria 
and these are treated with some good bacteria. Now this one when this is inserted in the human body then what happens the memory cells of the human body will identify it and the WBC defense mechanism of, of our body will start fighting with these bacteria, and then our body will remember this bacteria. So the next time when the bacteria enters our body because our body already know how to kill that bacteria. So our body will kill that bacteria that is the importance of a vaccine. Now microbes helps in increasing the fertility of the soil. How do they increase the fertility of the soil? Because see when we go on when farmers grow crops every year and then nothing is added to the soil then what happens the fertility of the soil will be lost. Now to maintain the fertility of the soil what is added some organic manures are added to it organic manures or we call it humus these are added to the soil. Now decomposition of these organic manures they are done by decomposing bacteria. We have so many good bacteria present like rhizobium bacteria they are present in the root noodles of the leguminous plants all the pulses plant they have that. Now this rhizobium bacteria it has the ability to fix the atmospheric nitrogen into nitrogen compounds. So like that so many microbes are there these microbes will help in increasing the fertility of the soil hence the farmer will get a larger produce. Now microbes help in cleaning the environment we throw every day so much of garbage waste it gets accumulated yes manure is the correct manure so in everyday household activities so many waste they get accumulated in our houses what do we do with that waste we throw that waste where on the soil land if we have kitchen garden we throw there what happens to that waste after 7 or 10 days we will find the waste is not there the peels of the fruits and then vegetables and all we will not be finding what happens to that that are decomposed by the decomposing bacteria when these decomposing bacteria act on it then it releases carbon dioxide gases and with that little foul smell it comes. But just imagine if these decomposing bacteria they will stop their work then what happen? Yes, Vaishnavi, vermicompost, yes by adding earthworms we make vermicompost. So there will be heap if we stop cleaning then what happens? these waste will get on accumulated every day every day then if you want to come to school you have to remove these waste and then you have to come. Now because thanks to the microbes which will help in decomposing these waste and it will be reduced to like this again little bit and this waste decomposing process will increase the fertility of the soil fertility of the soil will be enhanced because all these organic organic substances are converted to manures. So microbes are called farmers friend why microbes are called farmers friend who will tell me the answer why microbes are called farmers friend who will answer me yeah first last question microbes are called farmers friends just imagine if microbes are not there whether the fertility of the soil will be maintained the crops will grow properly the product which farmers will get 
Microbes will eat germs. No, they yes. Help in making the soil fertile. Puja correct. They help in making soil fertile. They grow. They help in growing the crops well. Yes, Manoj. Jagdish. Yes, they increase the fertility of the soil. Hence, microbes are called farmer's friend. They are our friends also because they are used by human beings for so many purposes. So, these are these are the all importance harmful effect of microbes. So, when we compare the harmful effect and importance of microbes, then we will find that the importance of microbes are far far more than their harmful effects. So, this that is all for today's class. We will see you in next class with another concept. Prepare well. Hope that this time you will be getting good marks in your test. Everyone should get out of out in your test. Listening the concept patiently and answering, responding to me. For that, thanks to all of you. So, we will see you in the next class. Till then, goodbye.